Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2. In this video, I begin construction of the International Space Station, or at least the replica thereof, in this game. And it is going to be a challenging endeavor because, of course, the game is in an early access state and there are many bugs. But we are going to give it a go. I have here a Proton replica, as you can see, and we are going to launch the first module of the International Space Station, which is Zarya. I'll show that once we get it to where it's going. And we'll take a closer look at that because I don't want to pull this apart. Uh, right now we have the Proton with sort of a pseudo hot staging uh, arrangement here with a whole bunch of struts. But actually I had originally made it with fairings. It turns out though uh, with struts it's a little bit more stable. With the fairings around it or even with the engine plate fairings it seems more wobbly. So... I decide that we would just have it strutted across. There is still an engine plate here. This uh, top stage does not have an engine plate. I just put a decoupler here and strut it across. So that's just more stable and I think that's a better bet. As far as our engine choice is concerned, at the bottom, ooh, at the bottom we have six vectors. We can't really see that very well. These aren't boosters. These are fuel tanks on Proton. They don't decouple on Proton. And that's just because uh, their transportation system only allowed a certain width. And so these are just add-on fuel tanks in order to make up the amount of propellant that this stage needs. So the vector engines are thrust limited, otherwise we would have way too much thrust and it just wobble apart. Uh, they are thrust limited to 60%. So this isn't an efficient rocket, it's meant to be a replica. And yeah, 60% thrust, and we have six of them to be a replica of Proton. On the second stage, we have four of the swivel engines, and then on the third stage, one of the Reliant, and then four twitch engines. And that's because on the real Proton, the third stage has four vernier engines, and the center thing does not actually gimbal. So, yeah, that is basically what the Reliant engine is. It's basically a non-gimbling version of the swivel, as far as I'm concerned. And the root part is actually the controller up here. I thought that was a good idea to help with the wiggles. I haven't tried this uh, setup out yet. We will see how it works, but based on prior testing with other things, I think this will be better. So I haven't launched this particular version of the rocket so far, and we are going to see how it works. Okay, so here we are on the pad. We will put the station into an inclination. And I think I'll just go out at a heading of 45 degrees. And that will make, of course, rendezvousing a bit more challenging, but uh, it will be more realistic-ish. So anyway, uh, ignition. Okay, and launch. Okay. Up goes our proton. I'm gonna try and roll into our heading. Okay, roll program complete. Here we go. And we are going to put the station into a relatively high orbit. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. Everything looking very steady. The main factor is, in fact, putting the probe core here, I think. That's much better than dealing with the payload and the fairing swaying about. I am not going to hot stage because I'm currently afraid of exactly what's going to happen if I do. So we'll just decouple and stage simultaneously. Unfortunately, I don't have an uh, inclination reading, otherwise I get it to the ISS inclination of 51.6 degrees. I don't know, I think the Delta V re reading is wrong though. Must be. Yeah, the Delta V reading is very wrong. Weird. Okay, separation and ignition of the next stage. I'll wait until the third stage before separating the fairings. Now obviously the swivel engines are not a good upper stage engine. They just happen to fit 
the way I wanted them to fit and sort of suit the part. The terriers would be too small. Uh, let me just cut it off there. We don't have that much fuel in this stage. I want to get to the third stage, so... Uh, separation? Not exactly how it's supposed to work, but... Okay, and fairings. Oh, these fairings scare me. Woo! Yeah, I'm sure that's a good idea. Okay, but we're really pretty high. Okay, so this is the Zarya module. I put extra struts here. I probably should remove those. This is very stable right now, and I think those might be excessive. We spared no parts, really. Uh, this has a lot of stuff going on here. We've got the docking port on the nadir side, and we've got the forward and aft. I decided that the cupola module was the best fit for the shape of the Zarya at the back. Of course, we've got the hitchhiker storage container here. And I, there are a lot of RCS ports on Zarya. They're actually a set in the back and set in front. I decided to just put a center line set. That's one thing that I skimped on a bit. We do have some RCS tanks here, but we have no OMS engines, even though it probably ought to have them. I've, I'll leave that for Zvezda. We do have actually fuel because the center bit here Instead of using a tube, I just went with a fuel tank. So we actually have liquid fuel there. And oxidizer, of course. So, unfortunately, we don't have the nice spherical cabins that would fit better. The ones that we had from the Making History pack in KSP-1. So the Mark 1 can was probably the best bet here. And I suppose the window should be facing the nadir side, but it's got a docking port on that side in real life. So that's what we've got. We currently do not have the claw in the game, nor do we have robotic parts, so each module is going to have to have its own propulsion in order to dock. At least as far as I can tell. Why does it say game pause when I'm at 1x? I think it's a little bit confused about what pause consists of sometimes. So we're definitely not using much of this stage. On the right side it says that this stage has zero delta V. So... I think uh, we'll leave it like that and have the station boost up further with its RCS. We don't have engines on it. Okay. Does this have control right now? It seems to be focused on this, but that's the resources for that vessel. Oh, it seems like we have control. Okay, we can deorbit this then. I should have used more of it. But that's definitely the resources for that vessel, so I'm confused. Okay, that's deorbited. Hey, okay, uh, can we fizz warp? No, we can't fizz warp right now. While using the RCS, apparently. Yeah, it stops the RCS. We're not going to be able to get to a circular orbit with this, but we'll boost it up so that anything rendezvousing with it can get there easier. And Zvezda will do some boosting up, I think. Okay, I'll take 229 by 120 for now. And I will disable SAS just in case. Somebody suggested that orbital issues might be caused by SAS. I'll just disable it for now. And we will try that out. Alright, time to launch the shuttle with the Unity module to this and see if we can make it happen. So here we are with the space shuttle and I've made some modifications since last time in the hope that it will work better, but we'll see. I named it STS-88, which is the mission that we're doing, but it decides to rename it for some reason. Uh, it is STS-88, which brought the Unity module PMA-1 and PMA-2 up to the station, but we are not carrying PMA2 in this case, and that is just because we don't have the space. Um, we could remove the forward docking arrangement and try and fit PMA2 in there like that. I think it would work out then. However, that would mean that in testing re-entry, I won't have the right balance because most of the time we'll be carrying that. And so I wanted to make sure that we do have the correct balance for future missions, and so we'll carry PMA-2 on the next shuttle mission, which just carries two PMAs plus the Z-1 truss. 
The Z1 truss is basically the control moment gyros that are on the station, which are the equivalent of our, re our reaction wheels. So that's not going to be too bulky. And it always wants to default me to the runway with this. So now we do have to line up with our target. Uh, currently we are out of line. And I guess our target is default name 20 now. <laughs> uh, yep, it's default name 20. I don't know how to rename it. Maybe in the tracking station. But we're going to have to time warp a bit. I think that should do the trick. We'll monitor it after we get through the really wiggly part. Sort of wiggly right now. Alright. Well, throttle is up. Ignition. Okay, and launch. We do want to be able to roll into the right heading. So, but first we have to pull that prograde vector over. A roll and yaw coupling in the game right now leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, that's sort of the right heading. And booster set. I did add separatrons to the boosters so that they don't hit the wings or even threaten to. Don't know what that sound was, but. Okay, now we are much more stable. So we can take a look at what's going on here. Uh. We're a little bit early, it looks like. Well, I'm going to try and go further south so that we can intersect the path of the target earlier. And hopefully that'll help. So basically I'm trying to turn my path down here so that we might still be burning when we cross its path. But there should be plenty of fuel in the external tank for this. So we are temporarily increasing our relative inclination before decreasing it. Okay, now I'm gonna start correcting the inclination. Okay, looking good. Well, better than it was earlier. Okay, and we'll shut down there. One degree of inclination left to do. Uh, Apoapsis about 120, which is the minimum for the station, and periapsis, hopefully a good disposal periapsis for the external tank. Okay, external tank separation and avoidance maneuver. Kidoki looking good, though I don't know about the 188 meters per second right there. Let me stage again. It still says 188. I don't believe it. We should have much more than that. We have a full load of mop propellant and also the cargo is less than what we tested with. I mean, it's not the hardest thing to figure out. We've got a certain amount of mop propellant. We've got two mop propellant engines. I'm not too sure why it has a problem with the Delta V right now. Okay, I will take that orbit for now. 124 by 119. And yeah, it says 36 meters per second left, but we've got most of our mop propellant. That's a good enough correction right there. And ignition. Okay, 0.1 degree away. Should be fine. Okay, that seems like a good intercept right there. Less than two kilometers. Okay, I've freely wasted some fuel in order to rendezvous here. And especially rendezvous in daylight. Okay, we are more or less parked, but I would like to get closer. And let's verify the state of it. Are you rotating? It seems pretty steady. SAS is not on. 
And while we're here, I'm going to make sure that we've topped off the payload just like that. Okay, that's fine. So now the payload will be topped off because we don't have fuel prioritization. It drains from everything at once. We needed to make sure of that so that we can definitely dock. Okay, I'm going to park it here. Let's get the payload out. Payload. Payload. We'll handle roll last, but roll is important in this case. We're using a lot more than I was expecting. Okay, I'm gonna have Zarya help. The speed that's being... The speed that's being read over here is different from the one be, being read on Unity. I don't understand. It looks sort of okay. I hope we won't have a very subtle tilt to the solar panels or something. Oh, wow, it, it docked like... we were ways away before it docked. Uh, I mean, uh, we we docked like violently. Um, I should really decrease the docking acquiring force because that was a long distance away. I don't need it docking that fast. Okay, but we've got Unity on Zarya. I think this is right. <laughs> stuff to remember. Anyway, the shuttle's right there. We're going to have to bring more stuff up and dock all sorts of stuff together and hope nothing glitches out. SAS is off here. Switch back to the shuttle. And we are going to... It's the velocity with respect to target is just going crazy now. I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, that seems weird. Okay, first job done here. Now, making it back might be more of a problem. Now it says we have 400 meters per second. That's nice of it. Changed its mind. I guess the payload in the bay must have really confused it or something. Okay, retro burning into a standard orbit. Well, something's on a crash course. I hope it isn't our station. Um, oh no. I think the station's on a crash Ah, uh, I think it messed up our station. I think it messed up our station. SAS was off. It would appear that time warp caused the problem. Maybe if I turn SAS off here, it'll be all right. So our station's there. It's called Combined 34. I'm actually going to go to the tracking station and rename it. International Spaceship. Listen, this is important. Do not mess this up. We can't even read that type. <laughs> Station. All right. Okay. You must not change that thing's orbit. Okay, game? We will save mightily. Okay, close enough for me. Verify orbits. All right. So now the Space Center's in the dark, so we have to wait. I wonder what that... this is sort of... piece of debris right there. Isn't that a... this is a piece of debris right there? And it's just sort of sitting there in the middle of space? Things don't just sit still in space. What is that thing doing? Now we're in an inclined orbit, so we can't just come down to the KSC anytime. We have to wait until the KSC is gonna be under our orbit. I've made things a lot harder on myself. I really shouldn't have. It still calls this Combined 34. I changed its name in the tracking station. It calls it Combined 34 still. we will probably end up a little bit further north than I want to be, but... Yeah, because we're... It's already under our, under our path right now. Okay, we're coming in. Pretty sure we're going to overshoot again, because the KSC is right there, I think. On the right side, we've got a lot of land in front of us this time, in this path. Saying we're gonna strike over here, but yeah, I think we can make it to land. We just can't make it to the KSC. This is an 
odd path anyway, so we're basically testing this from scratch. Anyway, we've got bigger problems. Uh, will the shuttle still flip out and go crazy is more of a problem. Right now we're using a lot of pitch authority, so i to try and pitch down. Pitching down too fast is also a recipe for going out of control. Basically, the faster you're going, the bigger your vertical stabilizer needs to be in order to control yaw. So you don't want to pitch down until you're good and slow. Otherwise, you're going to not have control authority. But, of course, you don't want to wait too long, otherwise you will just stall. Okay, looking good so far. But we're only now getting into the thicker part of the atmosphere. We are below Mach 3 now. We are below Mach 2. Okay, breaking below Mach 1 now, this is transonic. But we've been well controlled now. Yep, we've got some streaks. It thinks we are aerodynamic, potentially. It doesn't look like we can get across to that land over there. So I'm going to have to turn at some point. Okay, trying to turn here. Okay, trying for the flattest terrain I can see here. And I'm trying for this stretch. Uh, okay, JSV wants to be a sideways. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, for some reason JSV thought it ought to be sideways. I guess that's because of how the shuttle was mounted or whatever. Trees are not collidable. Trees are not collidable. <laughs> wow, it, it really reduces speed quickly. Uh, okay, okay. Brakes. Brakes. All right, folks, we have landed the shuttle safely somewhere in KSP-2. Uh, it's not where I intended, but it's an improvement. We started assembly of an international space station. We know there are glitches because it almost tried to kill it, but we presumably saved it. It doesn't like its name. It's still called Combined 34 here. Okay, I'm going to rename it again. It doesn't want to... It doesn't want to accept that. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know why, but it is called Combine 34 for now. We have it. We have a little star with it. Okay, it is, it is still here. It's still in a good orbit. It's okay. <laughs> and we will send more up to it in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.